These are a little bit different than the head shears because what you have here is you've got this curved blade and it's got this angle. So you wanna try and follow the angle and I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. We're hey everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hi you guys, good morning to you. Happy Wednesday, it's day 143. If you don't know, we're the Quarantine Gardeners and this is our daily video log of us accomplishing different projects around our garden while we're under quarantine. And, and thank you for being here and for watching today. We hope this is helpful for you. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below you guys so you don't miss out on all the daily videos we post. And guys, we haven't talked about this lately. We started this daily video log to help you while you're under quarantine out in your garden and to hopefully give you some inspiration and maybe some ideas of what you can do while you're sheltering in place. And what's been so cool is a lot of you have commented and helped drive our content and we've been producing videos kind of based on questions we received from you and different projects you're doing around your yard. So we really thank you for that. Yep. Thanks guys. So guys, today is day 143 of us doing these different projects around our garden. So today we're gonna go over how to do that, some materials you're gonna need, supplies to get that done and show you how to do it. Well, and yeah, we're, we need to do this because next week we're gonna be, we have a landscape job for all of next week for a former client of Sean's from a long time ago. And you guys, we haven't been doing landscape projects for other people, but we're kind of getting back into that a little bit because we realize how fun they are and how much we love it. Yep, and we get to practice what we preach to you guys. So it's always good. Theory is always good, teaching is always good, but also it's always good to get out there and actually apply what you know and keep practicing your skills. Yeah, so that's something that's come about recently and we're taking on a few landscape jobs now in our area, so that's kind of fun for us. So next week actually, we'll be posting that every day. We'll, we'll be filming on location from that site all of next week, so stay tuned for that too. Yeah, it'll be fun. So with that, let's get to sharpening our hand tools. So here is our little workbench for kind of makeshift workbench. Yep, so here we are guys, and here's our pruning tools. What we have here, we'll point them out to you. We've got some head shears, some manual head shears. We've got two sizes. Um, we've got a smaller and then a larger Corona classic cut hand pruners here. These are Corona as well. Yep, these are Corona as well, totally. And then we've got two loppers to the right here. One's the larger uh, compound type of cutting lopper. and also has the telescoping handles. And then we just have a fixed handle lopper that is just really nice to get in with tight spaces to make those cuts. And you guys have seen these tools if you've seen our um, Tool Saturdays featured the pruning shears and the loppers on two different episodes. So guys, with showing you this, now we gotta tell you, before you get into the sharpening, you need to have a couple things set up beforehand just so you can do this with a good flow and you don't lose anything and you have what you need. So I'm gonna point some stuff out here to you. First off, you're gonna need a couple of crescent wrenches or pliers. And as you can see, that's because these pruning tools have nuts on them. And some of them have just one nut to loosen. And then some of them have a nut with maybe you'll need an Allen wrench. And then others are gonna have a bolt hex head and a nut. So you're gonna need probably two, if not more, of the crescent wrenches or the pliers. And then we've got a small Allen wrench here to take care of a couple other things. Next. You're gonna need files. Now, we're gonna show you how to sharpen these tools, but we're gonna do it by hand because we don't have a grinder. If you have a grinder, good for you. Um, you can still apply what we are gonna talk about today with that grinder, but we're gonna do stuff by hand. Here's all the different files we have to get the job oh, done. Why do we have so many? I didn't realize Now, that. the reason we have so many is we don't usually use all of these all the time, but when we do, um, it's nice to have them. Um, it's for different angles. Uh, there's different uh, angles on these pruning tools and there's notches and different things. It's good to have these different sized and shaped files so you can really get in there into these nooks and crannies. There's, there's just places you might need these. We might not use all of these today, but I just wanted to show you that you can use different sizes and shapes of files. And can I just tell you guys, Sean is literally in his happy place right now. <laughs> he has to play with his tools. I get to handle stuff. I get to do so, stuff. Really, guys, what it's going to come down to, you're going to need a flat file. It's just a file. It's got two sides. This is what you're really going to need. Um, the other ones, they come in handy, but if you don't want to get too detailed into the things, you're not going to need those specific ones. But again, they're nice to have. So, and you can see I've also got our file here. This is a round file. This is the file that I use on our chainsaw to sharpen our chainsaw teeth on that, uh, on that chain. But today I just have this out here because we might be able to use it on some of our blades out here for some of the notches and such. Okay, so with that, 
We've got some WD-40. This is our, this is just a standard oil that you can use for lubricating and, you know, just keeping things nice and smooth. It's good to have this and I'll show you more about that in a minute. And we've got some paper towels. These are good to have as you're filing. Um, you're gonna wanna clean the blade every once in a while to get those shards of metal that you're gonna scrape off and file off. It's good to have this around to keep the blade and the area clean. So that's nice to have. And next up, you can see we got a pot, right? What are we potting today, Sean? Nothing, that's, <laughs> that's what we're potting. We're potting nothing. This is to keep the pieces of nuts and bolts and washers and different pieces that you're gonna take apart. You're gonna put all those different pieces in here as you, as you handle each individual pruning tool. And this is because you don't wanna lose the small pieces. You don't wanna have to replace any of the nuts and bolts and different things because I'll tell you, it's a pain in the butt to replace them. I'll show you in a minute. I've had to replace multiple pieces on these tools and it's hard because these tools are engineered a specific way with specific pieces. It's hard to replace them. So have something really easy to just put all those pieces into as you sharpen each tool one at a time. So quick question before we start, coming from somebody who's never really sharpened tools before, mm -hmm. how, like, how often do you need to do this? So really for homeowners, for home gardeners, it's like every six months really is what's recommended out there. And you're gonna hear different information out there. You're gonna hear different information on when to sharpen, how to sharpen, what to use to sharpen your blades with and your tools with. It kind of comes down to what you're comfortable with and what you have available, especially right now with the pandemic. And guys, we'll link down below in the description of this video for any of these things, uh, these supplies and these hand tools so you can check them out and see what you can get or what you're comfortable with using. Okay, so, so next, um, explain to everybody why we're doing this right now. So, got three answers for that, why we're doing this right now. Like One, before fall, right? Yes, fall, definitely, fall pruning. Fall pruning's coming and we wanna have these ready to use. It's not fun going out into your garden with dull, uh, beat up tools and trying to get the job done and it takes you longer, it's hard to do the work, it's hard on your plants, um, and it, it can actually hurt your plants if you don't have really sharp, useful tools. Um, it can lead to other problems with the plants, so that's one reason. Another reason is, is because we have our job coming up next week uh, and we wanna have these ready to go. They need to be just ready to grab and get into the landscape and start rocking and rolling and making those cuts. So we don't wanna have these tools not, um, we don't wanna have these tools not ready because that's just not how we operate. And now three, the third answer is, we're actually developing a pruning course for the fall. And so that's another reason why we wanna do this is to get ready for that. We're prepping ourselves for that and so some of this content is gonna go into that course and we're gonna have that on Teachable, but we'll have more information on that um, as the weeks roll out here. So, but pretty cool. Okay guys, so we're gonna get into it here. So something you need to know before you really start taking things apart and start filing and doing all this stuff, you wanna clean your tools. You wanna have them clean. It's nice to have a clean surface to, uh, to get nice and sharp. But in this case, um, we're gonna clean as we file. It's an interesting concept. A lot of people probably wouldn't recommend doing that, but in this case, that's what we're gonna do. And it's super easy. So first off, we're going to grab our head shears. And so these are head shears, if you don't know, and it's got, it pivots in a scissor motion. Here's our cutting blades right here. As you can see, these come together and they cut and they shear large amounts of stems and plant material all at once. So it pivots off this point. It's a bolt with a nut on it. And so I've already loosened this for the case of shooting this video, I'm just gonna take this off. And so when I take this off, I'm gonna bring this over. He's got his bucket. Here's this bolt. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna set that in here like that because it's got a washer in it and I don't wanna mess that up. So really, what we wanna do is we wanna find the edge of this tool and we've got the one side. And you can do this with gloves, you can do it without gloves. I prefer to do it without gloves because I get that feel of what I'm doing and it's easier for me to just stop and check the edge instead of having glove on. I gotta take it off, then I gotta do this, gotta put it back on, keep going. Kind of a pain in the butt, so I'm not going down that road. So, but safety first, remember. So, okay, so what you wanna do, find your edge. You're gonna wanna take your file and you're gonna wanna find that angle as best you can because you're gonna wanna mimic that angle as you come down on this. And you can see as I do that, I'm exposing new metal, I'm exposing the metal below any of the debris or any of the mess that's already on these blades. And you can see my angle isn't the best right now, but I'm just showing you as an example what you wanna do. So 
you want to try and match that angle and have your file as flat on that angle as possible. So that's what you want to try and mimic and you want to try and keep sharp. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go over to the side over here and we're going to, we're going to station this so it's steady. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do is, is we're going to hold on to this. This is how I do it anyway. I find that edge and I hold it down here. So I steady it. And then I take this and I just do that. You can see, now look at that. See how I'm, I'm going in that motion. I'm pushing down, pushing down, and I'm exposing that metal. I'm taking all the grime and different pieces of plant goo off of that, and I'm exposing that metal, and I'm trying to mimic as best I can that angle. It's never gonna be perfect. It's hard to do but just takes practice. Your first couple strokes probably aren't gonna mimic that as best as it can, but you'll get there. So just keep trying and keep going. It's gonna take multiple swipes with the file to do this. So, and you don't wanna go too fast because if you go too fast, you run the risk of messing up that angle and dulling what you just sharpened. And also you can cut yourself. You can mess yourself up, especially with a long cutting edge like this. So go slow, don't go fast. And that's how you get your head shears sharpened. And we would just keep going on this until we got this the way we want it. I've done that. Now what you want to do is flip it over and you're going to have little barbs along here. And if you don't do anything about those barbs that you just pushed off of the metal when you sharpened it, it's not going to be as sharp as it can. So what you do is you take your file again, put it up flat on this, on your blade, and then just go like this real quick. And what you're doing is you're taking all those barbs off. See, and I've exposed a little bit of the part of the blade on the underside. This isn't the side you want to really sharpen, sharpen. This is the side you want to sharpen. And now when I do this, oh yeah, that is, that is almost razor sharp. We could cut through paper with that. That's cool. Yep. So, and just to, just to tell you guys, the ends are always, the tips are always the hardest because there's just, there's an ending to it. So it's hard to get that tip sometimes. So that might take a little extra time. With that, I'm not gonna show you the other edge because it's pretty much the same. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna put this back together. Here's our bolt and you can see this bolt. It's got a square piece to it. It locks in. You can see it locks into this oddly shaped piece here and then it locks in here too. So these meet up and that's so the bolt doesn't really move when it goes in there. So you just gotta get it to fit in. There we go. See that click, clicked in? I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna grab inside our little bucket here. I'm gonna put this back on. That's pretty much all there is to it on getting this done. Now, before I really tighten this down, I need to oil this because it's gonna help with the scissor motion. It's gonna help keep the metal on metal nice and smooth for me. So I'm gonna take our WD-40 here. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna put this over, over the grass, our, our yeah, grass. Yeah, don't, sorry, our grass is so ugly right now, you guys. It's, we do let it go dormant. Take your end, put it right here. Just do that, little squirt, that's all it is. Kind of work that in a little bit. Yeah, oh yeah, you can, all, you can feel it too. Yeah, just get a little squirt there, it doesn't take much. WD-40 is pretty neat stuff. And then if you want to, go ahead and just do that. Just a little squirt there. And then when you, as you use this, that makes that a lot smoother. You're actually gonna get a better cut when you do that. So, and it's good to have this WD-40 as you're using these, cause as these kind of get gummed up with all the different plants you're gonna cut, um, you put that WD-40 on there intermittently as you're doing it, and it helps with the cutting motion and keeps giving you a good cut. Let's tighten this bad boy up. Now, as I tighten this, you guys, I'm gonna go only to a certain point because you don't wanna tighten this all the way. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the scissor motion. This isn't gonna wanna work. You gotta have it a little loose. So what you do is, is you get it to a certain point and then you take this and kind of twist a little bit and see if you can rock these two pieces back and forth. And if there is any, there is some movement there, you can kind of see it's kind of moving back and forth a little bit. It's not tight enough. So we still gotta tighten it some more. But this down here on this bolt feels like it's tight. Okay, so now I just did, it. oh, that's that's too tight. Because now I really have to kind of work a little bit to get that to go back and forth. So now I gotta loosen it up. And you'll feel this out. You'll figure it out as you go. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice and smooth. 
All right, good to go. So guys, you know the basics now of how to sharpen the edges on your hedge trimmers, your manual hedge trimmers. Now let's move really quick into the hand pruners, the hand shears. So we'll go with the small piece, the small guys first, because these are Allison's and you know, ladies first. So I'm gonna undo that. So it, I don't know if you saw me do that. So what I did was, is I took this piece off. Oh yeah, little bucket, put it in the bucket. I had this locked up because I don't want this piece when I'm taking this off to be all loosey goosey and be all over the place. I want that blade stationary so it's safe. Now that it's off, I'm gonna take this, undo that. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do this. Now, just took that off. What we want is we want this whole piece. Um, we don't need this lower piece here. So first, let's take that out, put that in the bucket. Now for these, they have this spring. It goes around that little peg there on the bottom. So what you do is, is you just undo, just kind of unscrew this, and then it just comes right off. We're gonna set that down there. This is a really cool thing about the Corona tools and these, these classic cuts. They come in two different pieces, and these are all forged together. This is all one piece of steel, and so is this. And then it just fits together with one pin. Super easy to maintain, super easy to handle and take apart and put back together again. Just saying, that's one reason why I like these so much. The Felcos, a lot of different pieces, small pieces, and you gotta put it together like a puzzle. It's not much fun. Now you can see this is a little dirty, so we're gonna put some WD-40 on it while we're doing this. I'm gonna take one of our paper towels here and just see if I can just wipe that real quick and see if I can just clean that up just a little bit. These get a lot of use. Allison really likes her set, so. I do, I love these. So these are a little bit different than the head shears because what you have here is you've got this curved blade and it's got this angle. So you wanna try and follow the angle, but it's hard to do when it's such a small blade and it's such at a curve. So what we're gonna do is, in this case, is we're gonna have stationary our file and we're gonna take this and we're gonna move this on the file and we're gonna go in a certain motion what we're gonna do too is, is we're gonna try and mimic that angle of that blade. And so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna put it on here and I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. We're gonna try and we're gonna try and match that angle of that blade, and we're gonna as we go, we're gonna move it like that in that motion. And so you can kind of see there is some resistance. It's almost like sharpening your knives in your house. Your knife set. Which we need to do too. Yeah. This is this is how I do it inside too. This is how I do our knife set. But do it up here. Don't do it down here because this is hard enough to hold like this. It's easier to hold it like this and against you to really study that and then get that knife blade down there. And plus, this is a small blade. You don't need to go down here and do it right here. You do that, you're gonna run the risk of cutting yourself and it's just not, it's just not good to do. It's really unsafe. You can cut yourself or stab yourself, don't do it. So just keep going like this. Oh yeah. You can see as I'm doing this, there's little flecks of metal coming off of this. And if I turn this over, look how much of that blade I've exposed. Isn't that cool? That means we're taking the, the dirt and grime off of it, but also we're taking pieces of that metal off and that's helping us sharpen that blade. So we're just gonna continue here. And Chris from Corona, if you're watching us, he's our friend over at Corona Tools, great guy. Um, just, uh, I hope you agree with how we're, how we're doing this. <laughs> and again, just like on those head shears, the tips are always the toughest. So if you can, kind of concentrate some of your energy in sharpening just on those tips. The best thing to do is too, is when you're doing the sharpening, try and keep your angle of the blade on the file as steady and try to repeat that as much as possible. That'll give you a nice, nice edge. Nice constant edge. I think we got a pretty good edge on that. I'm gonna do what I told you to do on the uh, on the head shears, and I'm just gonna go real quick on that back side. I'm gonna get those burrs off of there, those metal burrs. And now we're gonna check this. Whoa. Yeah, we could cut through paper. I could shave with this. With the WD-40s help to really work in there. And when I do this, guys, I'm gonna use one of our smaller files. Which one should I use? Let's use this one. This one's fun. I'm just gonna take this and just run it over this real quick. What I'm trying to do too is I'm not trying to get this down on the blade because I just did that. 
So let's see if I can do this real quick here. I don't want to dull that blade I just sharpened, but I want to try and get this as clean as I can. So when Allison uses this, she's going to feel real confident when she uses it, and she's going to feel the ease of using a nice sharpened and cleaned pair of hand pruners. Something you want to think about too is maybe filing a little bit and just cleaning this lower portion, this cradle of these hand shears. That'll help too with future use of this. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use a little bit more WD-40. And again, we're going to use our little file. We're just going to do this real quick. Maybe I'll use the round one. Yeah, there we go. Good thinking, Sean. So guys, we're going to put this back together. And so again, we have to take this piece and we got to put it over this and start it on here to wrap around and get locked in there so this doesn't come off like it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. And I'm just going to see how I did that. It just kind of goes around there like that. I'm just going to do that, and uh, that's pretty much it. So then we'll match these up, put our, put our bolt back in, turn it over, and then we just tighten this down. Do each hand tool separately, because if you don't, you're going to run the risk of mixing up all the pieces, and then you got to make heads and tails of a whole bunch of different pieces to go back and put back together all your tools. And that's just that's just not good. It's just not good practice, guys. So don't do it one hand tool at a time. Wow. So again, guys, what I did is when I put, as the same as I put together the hand shears, I did the same thing with this. Tighten this down, tighten down this bolt as far as I need to, and then start testing it and seeing if it moves, if it pivots back and forth between these two, and then get it tightened down uh, to a point where it still moves freely but it's not sticking and it's not, I don't have to do this with it. I can just do this with it. And these are just, oh yeah, these are gonna be great. Woo okay guys, so we've done uh, hand shears, we've done hedge pruners, now we're gonna do loppers. And what we have here, we've got the two different loppers. We're just gonna go over the compound loppers with this compound piece and the telescoping handles because this is a little bit more intricate. You can definitely apply what you've already seen on the head shears and the hand pruners uh, to these loppers and the other loppers too, but we're gonna go over these first. So I've already loosened these up. We've got two areas we need to actually take this piece apart from because on this, you can see there's a couple different things going on here. The piece we need to sharpen is this. This is our blade. And if you can see, this has got some pretty gnarly notches in it. This has been used a lot. and I can't remember the last time we actually sharpened this. To do it right though, we're gonna take this piece off and then we're gonna sharpen it. So we need to separate this piece from everything else. We've got two points that it's tightened down on. We've got this bolt here, and then we've got this bolt here where the compound piece of this really gets uh, where, where it's pivoting off. So we're gonna take this off first. Into the bucket it goes. Pop that out. Now, when I pop this out, I've got this bolt. I'm gonna set that in here. There's a washer between this compound piece to give us all that leverage action and the actual handle. So remember, when you're taking these apart, try to take it slow so you don't miss any pieces that you take out. That goes in there too. Okay, so now we have to, this is why we got the two crescent wrenches here. Here, here we go. This is what we want to do. Now again, we're going to treat this like we treated Allison's hand pruners. We're going to bring it up here and we're going to set this against us and we're going to try and match as best we can that angle. And we're going to bring it towards us like we're sharpening knives in the house, in the kitchen. We're going to get that action going and we're trying to follow the angle of the blade, the curve of the blade. So we're just kind of whipping it down. So looks like we're done guys, we've got that good. Got those burrs off of there. There's still some metal missing, but in this case, we could, we could try and keep going and try to even out that whole blade, but right now we don't need to. We just need it functional for the work we need to do. Maybe later on we'll figure that out. But again, we're looking good, nice and sharp all the way down. So okay, now it's time to put it back together.
Hey guys, just got to tighten down. Just feeling that. Oh yeah. So the trick with this is, is you got to make sure this bolt where it pivots off here for the compound piece to get really get that leverage when you're cutting with these, it can't be too tight. Same with this bolt though too, when you're tightening this one down, it's because the same thing. You don't want it too tight. You get it too tight and this is gonna be more effort to open and close it than you need to be. And you wanna put all your power into when you get it around that stem or that, that branch, you wanna put all your power into closing it, not opening it too. So, cause that can really tire you out real fast. So anyway, yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? That looks nice. So guys, we have a couple more tools to sharpen, but that's pretty much how you get it done. That's how you wanna do it. Everybody's gonna do it their own way, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you have on hand. Um, just make sure you're safe and make sure to get those angles of those blades correct so you don't have to sharpen it too long and take off too much metal off those blades. And guys, again, for any of the materials or tools we have in this video, all the supplies and the tools will be down below for you to click on. Leave your comments and questions down below for us. We love hearing from you guys. Give us that thumbs up, let us know we're doing a good job, and subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our latest videos. And that's a wrap for today, you guys. Thank you for watching and for being here, and we'll be back tomorrow with our Friday plant chat. So come on back to see which plant we're highlighting tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.